Learn and acquire languages. What does that mean? Is there any difference between these two? Yes, there is a difference. And in this video, I'm going to be discussing the acquisition learning distinction for second language acquisition and the monitoring hypothesis, which explains the relationship between these two. I found this incredibly interesting when researching, so I really hope you do too. The acquisition learning distinction states that adults have two ways of developing their language skills and their language performance. The first way is language acquisition. And this is very much like how children develop their language skills when learning their first language, in that it is a subconscious process, something that just happens and you're completely unaware that you're learning the language of acquiring the language. When this happens, you're generally not aware of the grammatical rules for the language, but instead have a feel for what's right and what's not. The whole sounds right phenomenon. And that's what it means to have acquired a language. You're essentially just picking up the language. I thought I'd pop in here and give you a good example of this. Yeah, so things that sound right. We say a great green dragon instead of green great dragons. You would say absolutely freaking lutely instead of absolute freaking Lee. I cheered up my friend, but you wouldn't say I cheered up her. These are all just examples of things we've acquired when we've picked up our native language, which for most of my audience here is English. But stuff like this would be picked up when learning other languages as well. Then the second way, language learning. What is that? This is kind of tricky because people generally use this term to describe everything, but it refers to the, the conscious knowledge of the language. This means that you you know the rules, you acknowledge the rules and you're able to talk about them. Other videos on my channel have given you tips for both of these methods, such as listening to as much as possible to acquire the language and also some study tips to help you learn the language. Essentially, if language acquisition is picking up the language, then language learning is knowing about the language. As mentioned in the beginning of this video, not sure if you picked it up or not, but it stated that adults have these two methods to learn languages. So the statement you probably heard that children can acquire the language while adults can only learn it is not true. This ability to, pick, to acquire and pick up languages doesn't disappear after puberty. However, this doesn't mean that adults will be able to always achieve native-like fluency in the language they're learning, but it does mean that this ability to pick up the language doesn't disappear which is pretty good news. One thing to note though is that although uh, children use this language acquisition to pick up their first language, they do uh, attend school. So there is an element of language learning in there also. So the first part of this video described the two methods in which we have to develop our skills in languages, but it didn't explain how they're used or how they relate to our language performance. So in my opinion, this is the actual fun part of this video because I'm going to explain to you exactly that. Monitoring hypothesis states that these two methods are used in very specific ways in our language development. Acquisition or the picking up of the language initiates or starts our competence or ability in the language. And it is also responsible and fuels our ability to speak this language fluently. So as you can tell, this is the end goal for most language learners learners, you know what I mean. <laughs> and on the other side, language learning, uh, it only really has one function, and that is to monitor the language and act as our own personal language editor. Monitoring can happen before or after we speak or write, before kind of acting like a processing plant and after with like self-correction. So in essence, the learning of the language can alter and fix up the acquired system, but it's the acquired system that allows for fluent and fluid speech and performance in the language. Okay, well, if, if that's the case, then is studying useless? Is there really any much point in studying the language? The monitoring hypothesis states that actually learning the languages, knowing the rules, the grammatical forms and everything like that, only really has a limited role in your language performance. Because in order to actually use what you've learned. You need to have enough time to sort through everything and pick out the right form of the verb, pick out the right rules and endings attached to it, and use it in the correct place in the sentence. And this is not an easy task by any means whatsoever, especially difficult when you're trying to do all of this in a natural conversation. And this results in you having probably a quite hesitant style of speaking where you're stumbling and 
you're fumbling over your words and you're potentially not even listening to your conversation partner because you're always trying to to think of what to say next in your next sentence. This whole monitoring system though is noticeably different when you have enough time to sort through everything. For example, a written test or a, gram or a grammar test. And this is where it really shines because when you haven't learned the language fully, when you haven't fully acquired the language yet, but conditions are met to use monitoring to a successful extent, then this can bridge the gap between learning and fluency. But all in all, you really shouldn't rely too much on what you've learned, especially when trying to have a conversation with someone. By overusing the monitoring system, people tend to be too overly conscious of the accuracy of what they're saying. And they tend to lose any real fluency by hesitating and second guessing themselves. If this is you, and I do try it for it not to be me too often, but if this is you, you probably have acquired a lot of the language, you just don't realize it and you don't trust yourself. So whenever you're in situations where you need to rely on your acquired learning to actually have a normal fluid conversation, you tend to turn back what you've learned just to be safe and it kind of ruins the flow of the conversation and tends to make you seem like you know less than you actually do because you're just not trusting yourself. So take home point. The best way to approach speaking to someone in a language you're learning is to use this monitoring system only when appropriate. So that means only when there's enough time and it doesn't interfere with the flow of a normal conversation. Your grammar might slip. You might make a mistake, a few mistakes or a lot of mistakes, but you will be able to speak much more fluently and have a meaningful conversation with someone when you try to use what you've acquired rather than what you've learned. So by using what feels like the correct word or the right way to say something, even if you're wrong, will make you sound so much more fluent because you won't be hesitating or scrutinizing yourself after every single word you say. Okay, I want to clarify this a little bit because it can be quite confusing. Using your acquired system means to trust yourself and basically just regurgitate the language you have picked up or absorbed. This is not to pause and list out the verb conjugations in your head before speaking because that's how you have learned grammar most likely. Instead, try and switch up your learning style to increase the amount that you listen to, the amount that you speak, the amount that you write. Basically just increase your exposure to the language so that you have more opportunities to acquire the language in a natural setting. Because if you think about it this way, how are you going to have and speak in a normal conversation naturally if the way that you're learning the language is not natural. But you can use what you've learned when there's a normal pause in conversation or when you're writing or whenever there's time that allows you to bump up the accuracy of what you're saying. So overall, studying is a supplement to acquired language learning. So basically listening, speaking, living the language is so much more important than most people even realize. Studying helps fix the leaks in your language and helps fill the gaps in your knowledge. It maybe redoes the paint job to make it look or sound better or nicer. But what actually fills the room is the language you've acquired. I hope that made sense. I hope everything in this video made sense and you learned something. If you want to read where all of this information came from, I'll leave a link in the description for you to read it yourself. If you would rather wait for me to do more videos on the topic, then yeah, maybe just subscribe down below. It's probably easier for yourself. Thanks for watching. And if you made it this far, leave a like. It really helps. And see you in the next video. Slon.